In this video, I will be taking the opportunity to introduce you to an exciting new feature which will allow you to integrate Python directly with EPL. I'll be showing this through Designer Project and also demonstrating activating PyDev. Firstly, open up Designer from your install. Let's create a new Palma project. We're going to create a project that will use Python functionality to easily calculate the mean using the Python statistics library. The project can easily be extended to add additional functionality later. So let's call this project statistics. We now have an empty project with some components we won't need. So let's remove some dashboard specifics as we won't be using them here. Now we'll install PyDev, which will allow us to see Python code highlighted correctly. Go to help install new software. Type in the following address and select PyDev only. Go through the screens and select accept when prompted and install anyway when the security warning appears. Designer will then ask you to restart. When it reopens, we will have some new options available to us. Right click on the project name and select new other. Scroll to PyDev and select source folder. Let's call ours plugins as this is where we want to store our Python plugin. It will then ask us to confirm our installation of PyDev. Choose manual config. Scroll to PyDev, interpreters, Python interpreter and select new on the far right hand side. Browse to the location of your install and under PAMA third party Python, select python.exe. Name the interpreter something more sensible, like the version of Python, which in this case is Python 3.6.6. .6. Okay, the next screen and click apply and close. Now let's create our actual Python plugin. Right click on the folder and select new PyDev module. We'll name our statistics plugin. Click finish and OK through the next screen. For our plugin, we'll start with a simple hello world example. We must import the Apama EPL action and base classes like so and create a new class derived from base. Define the private init method and initialize the superclass. Now let's create our simple plugin method, which in our case will just output a string. Very importantly here, we need to make this visible to EPL by adding a decorator. In this statement, we are saying that it's a simple action that takes no parameters and returns nothing. We just want to output an hello world string that could go to standard out, but what if we wanted to log this to the correlator's log? We could get hold of the correct logger as follows, and then output at the appropriate level, in our case, info level. It's also useful in good practice when initializing the plugin to state what it has been configured with. So you could output the following log statement in the init method as well. Now let's set up our configuration file that would make sure this plugin is included in our project. Open the existing correlator config file, create an EPL plugin section, followed by a section for our statistics plugin. And this name is how we refer to it in the monitor script. Set up the path to where the Python file is and also state the name of the class. Make sure this matches the name declared in the Python file. Now that we have a configuration file, we want to make sure the correlator will use it. Open the run configurations options. As this project hasn't been run yet, there is no run configuration created. Double click the Apama application to create a new one and change the name to statistics. This will help distinguish it from other projects you might have open in designer. Go to the components tab and double click on the default correlator. Tick the box beside the configuration to allow it to pick up the default correlator config YAML file. OK that and click apply on the next screen and then close. So to summarize what we've done so far, we've created a Python plugin file, included it in the correlator config file, and then ensured that the project used that configuration file. Now the next step is to create a monitor file that will use our plugin. Right click on the monitors folder and select new EPL monitor. We'll name our statistics monitor. Include the monitor in an appropriate package. The next step is to import the Python plugin into our monitor, making sure that the name is the same as the one defined in the config file. Now we can easily call the hello world method on the plugin. After making sure that everything is saved, we are at a point where we can test it. Simply hit the run button at the top, and as we're highlighted on this project, it will select the correct run configuration. You will then see the correlator log appear, and after a couple of seconds, you will see the hello world output. 
Now that we are sure that everything is integrated and working correctly, we'll stop this running and continue to expand our project. Now let's go back to our plugin and extend it to have a method that is capable of calculating the mean value if it is past a list of floats. As before, we must use a decorator. In this case, we're saying that it is being passed an EPL sequence of floats and will return a single float value. We can now import the Python statistics library, which gives us easy access to lots of useful functions such as mean. And we can use it as follows, passing in the list of floats and returning to EPL the mean value that is output. We should also include some useful logging here, clarifying the list of what we are attempting to get the mean of. Remember to be careful with what you output, as you don't want the correlator's log to become too cluttered. Now we are going to go back to our monitor and have it call this new functionality. Removing the hello world call, which is no longer needed, the new Python plugin method is expecting a list of floats, so for now we'll create a hard-coded list. Then we can simply call the calculate mean plugin method, passing in our list and keeping hold of the value returned. We then log to the correlator the mean value that is returned. Now we're ready to test again, and we expect to see all those log statements in the correlator log. Run the application as before, and after a few seconds we can see all of the expected log statements, the plugin being initialized, the plugin outputting that it will attempt to calculate the mean value, and EPL outputting what the mean value is. We could easily extend this plugin to make use of other methods on the Python statistics class, such as standard deviation, variance, etc. So now let's take our project one step further. Instead of it being reliant on a hard-coded list within EPL, let's have it interact with events. We'll extend it to allow the plugin to keep an ongoing list of floats, and allow for functionality to calculate the mean of that list when desired, and allow the monitor to receive events which can make use of those methods when appropriate. First let's add a new method to our plugin called update accumulated mean. We must also add a decorator to this to explain it to EPL. Here we are saying that it will take a single float value and does not return anything. We'll add a list to our class in the init method, which can be appended to. And our update method will simply add the new value onto that list. We also need another plugin method to calculate the mean value of that list when required. The decorator states that it doesn't take any parameters and will return a float value and this will simply return the mean value calculated using the statistics library as before. Next we'll extend our EPL to have two events. We could separate these out into separate event definition files, but for this simple example it's not entirely necessary. First declare an update accumulated list event, which will contain a float value, which we will want to be added to the list of accumulated floats in the plugin. Secondly declare a calculate mean event, this doesn't have any defined elements, but will act as a trigger to call on the plugin to then calculate the mean value of everything in this accumulated list at that time. Now we can remove the existing EPL plugin calls, so as not to confuse things, and instead create two new listeners for our events. The first is the listener for update accumulated list event, which will contain a float. Through the use of as, we are declaring and populating a variable called ul with the contents of the event received. We can then call the plugin method, update accumulated list, passing it in the contents of the received event's float value. Next, declare a listener to handle the second event. This should simply call the plugin's method, which will calculate the mean from all the values accumulated in the list. And we can log in the correlator what the mean is at that time. So to recap, we now have some new methods in the Python plugin, which can accumulate a list of floats and calculate a mean value of those when requested. We have some new event listers in EPL, and when triggered, we'll call those plugin methods. So next we need to have some method of sending those events to a running correlator. The events in question could be coming into the correlator from anywhere external through engine send calls. For simplicity purposes in the events folder we'll create a new events file. We'll populate it with multiple calls to the EPL event which will result in the Python plugin's list of floats being updated. And finally we'll call the calculate mean event. In designer, any new event files are automatically sent into the running correlator, but for our testing purposes we don't want this to happen. We want to at some stage decide when this file will be injected. So once again go to the run configurations, select statistics configuration, go to components and double click the default correlator. We want to control the event files, so go to the event files tab and there you will see the event file. Unselect the tick box and click OK. Apply on the next screen and close. 
Now we want to run this application with the understanding that no events will now automatically be sent into the correlator to trigger anything. Other than loading an initial startup, nothing significant is seen in the logs. Right click on the events file in the project explorer and select a PAMA send events. You will then see the output of the mean value that has been calculated for any float values stored in the Python plugin's internal list of floats at that time. Of course our events file could be manipulated in many different ways using batches or separate files for different events, or as mentioned, those events generated externally from some other software. And of course in our case, if you re-inject it, the output will be the same as it will append the same float values again onto the existing items and therefore the mean will remain unchanged. I hope you have found this video a useful introduction to Python plugins with the Palma. Please feel free to get in touch on stackoverflow.com with the tag Apama and ask any questions that you have. Thank you.